Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, viewers. Praise the Lord, brethren. Thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are joining us. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Welcome to our first Bible study session online, uh, our Thursday Bible study for this uh, new year, 2022. We welcome you so much. Thank you for being with us the whole of last year. And now we are starting off our new year, 2022, uh, as we continue with our Bible study. We had started the book of Haggai, and today we will continue with the book of Haggai. But before that, I just take this opportunity to say thank you for joining us. And we are, I pray that uh, the whole of this year you will join us in this Bible study as we continue sharing and breaking the bread of the Lord on the table of the Lord as we dine with the King of Kings through his word. So you are very much welcome and please uh, share, like, subscribe, comment on that uh, YouTube channel and that Facebook page and that when you share you will reach as many as possible. So we are so much grateful from Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry. We are very grateful for continuing to support us and be with us uh, your company is very much highly valued. May the Lord bless you. So into the word of God, the book of Haggai, chapter number one, uh, beginning from verse number seven to 11. We will study chapter number one of the book of Haggai, uh, verse seven to 11. Uh, before we start, uh, we continue, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name. We thank you, we adore you, we praise your holy name. You have been so gracious, merciful, and, uh, and you have given us the privilege, my Father, even to see this day. You are with us in the last year, and today you are with us, my Father, we give you glory. We pray that your grace will go with us the, the rest of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the viewers, I pray for them that are listening from wherever they are across the world, that this word will touch them with your great power and will bring your light of understanding, will bring, uh, will shine on us your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, through this word, I submit as a vessel that, Lord, I may be used of you for the glory and honor of your name to reach your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that, my Father, you will teach us uh, the new things in your word because your word is new every other day, uh, just as your mercies are new every morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, reveal to us your word. Reveal to us your will through your word. Speak to us, my God, through the Rema word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that my Father God, in this month, January, uh, February, and even up to December, we will go with you. In the name of Jesus, that you will always give our word for every week, for every month, for every quarter, and for the year, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you'll continue ministering to us. I pray for every individual that will be joining us, my Father God, in the course of this year, that Jehovah, we declare they will get the understanding of the Lord, the power of the word will work in them, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we shall be your great witnesses here. My Father and all over in the name of Jesus, we welcome you, Lord, that we will receive your word with a sound mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we surrender to you, Lord. My God and my Father, anything that might exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ, we subdue it under the feet of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that your presence will fill us. In the mighty name of Jesus, call many, my Father, even to, to this study. In the name of Jesus, that you may reach many, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for this platform, that, Lord, you will increase it in the name of Jesus and empower us more and more in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> we bless you, Lord, and we give you praise. Even as we start off, my God, may your anointing, your presence, and your grace be with us. Empower us, my God. This year, we are going a higher level, even in understanding your word, in doing your word, in walking in your word, and being empowered by your word and signs and wonders shall accompany us, shall follow us in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. 
May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Uh, we will continue. Remember, we started in December, we started Haggai chapter number one, and we had done uh, verse number one up to verse number six. So today we will proceed from verse number seven. I pray that the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. This is what the Lord Almighty says, verse 7. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. I'm reading from NIV. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces on people and livestock and on all the labor of your hands. I've read from Haggai chapter number 1 from verse number 7 to 11 in the NIV version. And uh, just maybe to recap uh, what we had learned uh, last time, we learned of how the Lord God had concerns uh, uh, about his people, the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem. He had concerned, uh, he was concerned that they had come from captivity from Babylon. They had been restored. God had enabled them even to be established. They had even built very nice houses. The Bible says that they had built uh, very well furnished paneled houses and we saw that they were paneled with cedars and that the cedars were quite expensive because they were material that were used uh, in the royal palace. And so these people were well established. However, they had uh, the, the work of the reconstruction of the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem had stalled. And we saw that it had been stalling, it had stalled for uh, for around 14 years. And so God was so much concerned that he had given the, 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 the goodwill even to the leaders, even to the governor, uh, to, uh, the, 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 the Babylonian leader, uh, even to the king uh, 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 Cyrus, even to the king of Persia at that particular time, so that the work of the, rec the reconstruction of the temple could continue. But then, unfortunately, the work was not continuing. The work had stagnated. It was no longer moving on. And so God was so concerned, and he spoke to the prophet Haggai. He spoke through prophet Haggai to his people, uh, uh, to, the, to the people of Judah. And uh, he specifically addressed uh, Zerubbabel, uh, son of Sheltiel, and Joshua, the high priest, son of Jehozadak. <clears throat> and he expressed his concern, and he knew that the people had murmured and said that it is not a time to rebuild the temple. Uh, yet they were busy constructing and, and living in very good houses. So God had told prophet Haggai to, Haggai to ha ask them, that was it time, that is in verse number four, that uh, was it time for them themselves to be living in their paneled houses while the house of the Lord was in ruins. So that's what we saw in December. And so uh, the Almighty God had told uh, uh, the people through Haggai to give a careful thought about that concern. So he spoke of a careful thought in verse number five. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. And after again talking to them in verse number six, uh, telling them as to why they were not prospering, as to why they were not 
uh, progressing, though they were in good houses, though they were working hard, hard, they were planting much, yet they were harvesting little. They were, they, they, their past uh, had been, uh, they, 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 it, it was as if there were holes in their pastures. And so they could, not, uh, they could not enjoy what they had been working for. In verse number six, that's what the Lord Almighty told uh, Haggai to tell the people. He was giving them a reason. Maybe they were just wondering, why are we not progressing? We were working hard. We were doing everything that, that we are able. Even if we harvest, we harvest little. And the little that we harvest, uh, they, they, it is devoured, it is taken away. With the little that we harvest, uh, it is, it's not seen. We cannot see what we are using it for. And so, now in verse number 7, this is why, where now the Lord God Almighty goes ahead to explain further. And before he explains further, he says again, just like in verse number 5, in verse number 7, he says again that give careful thought to your ways. He repeats what he has said in verse number 5. Verse number 7, Haggai says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. In other words, that God has explained as uh, uh, about what these people are going through and why they are going through that. And he is now giving them a remedy. But before he gives them a remedy, he tells them to give a careful thought. That it means that they'll not just fall into it. It means that they will not just rush. This is the solution. They have to do it with, their mind, with all their mind, their strength, and they have to turn back with everything that they are. Because living a particular course of life that you had started living, uh, 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 just living it is not easy. And that's why he says categorically that give a careful thought. Consider your ways. Think about it. Uh, do a self-examination, a self-evaluation. This is what the Lord God Almighty was saying. That examine yourself. Analyze yourself. Think about it. In other words, uh, he's asking them, the way you see yourself, th see whether uh, that's the route you are supposed to go. See whether that's how you are supposed to move on. See whether that's the life you want to live. See whether that's the relationship that you want to have with me. See whether I'm pleased with your relationship. Whether I'm pleased with the way you are running things. Whether I'm pleased with the way you are living even after bringing you from captivity. This is what the Lord God Almighty was saying when he said that give a careful thought. Or in other words, that be sober. Eh? Come back to your senses. Come back to your mind. Eh? Because it seemed they were not in their mind. They had, they had already forgotten uh, who had brought them back from captivity, who had set them free, who had, uh, why they had been set free to come back to Jerusalem. Remember the sole purpose, the biggest purpose was that the king said that the Lord God Almighty, we saw in the book of Ezra, that the Lord God Almighty had, uh, had, uh, had spoken to the king, telling him to, re to, 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 to make sure that he's sending people so that they may go and reconstruct the temple of God in Jerusalem. Yet now they had gone and they were just enjoying their lives. They were not reconstructing the, the, the temple. And so God was telling them, in other words, he was reminding them that, remember the reason as to why I allowed you to come up back from captivity. Remember, can you think about it? Retrace your steps. Huh? Retrace your steps. Just the way he, t he told again the Israelites uh, through uh, prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter number 31. But then even now, he also say, uh, 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 tells them that uh, this is what the Lord God says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path, and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. I think that, that should be, uh, that should be uh, Jeremiah chapter number, six, uh, chapter number 6, verse 16. 
Let me just quickly uh, uh, see there. So that we see. When, when God says, think about it. When God says that uh, give a careful thought uh, of your ways. Uh, uh, what does he mean and why does he say that? When he's telling these people. He had talked to, to Jeremiah. Through Jeremiah. Uh, Yes, Jeremiah chapter number 6, verse 16. Here uh, he says, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. So just the way God is telling Haggai to tell the people of Judah, because they are not doing the work, that they were supposed to be doing, reconstructing the temple. They have gone into a, a, a comfort zone. Uh, God also tells them uh, that they should give a careful thought. That is, retrace your steps. Uh, go back to where you, you lost it. Go back to where you are supposed to be. And, and as we have seen, just the way he said it in the book of Jeremiah 6, 16, that stand, stop at the crossroads, uh, this is now in NLT. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old gold, godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your source. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. In other words, these people had no rest. Just the way we have seen here in the book of Haggai. These people had no rest. These people, their souls were troubled. Yes, they were living in well-furnished houses but they were not at peace. They were troubled. They were not able to continue uh, to live uh, happily. Why? Because they had neglected the house of God. They had neglected, they had left the work of the, of the Lord, the house of the Lord to be in ruins. Praise the Lord. And so that is where now God was not happy with them. That's why he was telling them that now give a careful thought about your ways, Think about your ways. Reconsider your ways. Many times when we are, whatever we are doing, we are doing, it is good to settle down and reconsider your ways. You might be going through uh, uh, something that is tough. Uh, you, you have to stop and think, am I going through this because I'm being persecuted? Or am I going through this because of my foolishness? Is it because of my disobedience to the Lord? Is it because of my rebellion against the Lord? Is it because I've not stood the line of truth? Is it because I have not taken care of God's business and therefore God is not taking care of my business? Is it because I have not involved myself to make sure that the Lord God, uh, 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 the temple of the Lord, which is my body, uh, uh, pleases the Lord? So the Lord is not pleased with me. It is good to give a careful thought on your ways, to think about it, to do a self-examination, and even sometimes if you are not able to get everything, of course, as a human being, uh, because a, a heart of a human, a human being is, is deceptive, so you might deceive yourself that you are on the right track, yet you are not. So at such a time, that's when you do like uh, the psalmist uh, David, King David, who said, search me, O Lord, examine my ways. So you have to make that prayer. Uh, it is that giving a careful way, a careful thought on your, on your ways. And so after God telling them to think about it, to take some time, not just to rush into a decision, not just because uh, God has spoken so we will rush. After he has told them to give a th careful thought, then now he begins giving them a remedy. He begins giving them instructions. He begins directing them, giving them directives, telling them what they are supposed to do if they want to have uh, their souls at peace, if they want to enjoy again their life. He, he tells them what to do. And he says in verse number 8, that go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. <laughs> go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You see, no one can ha have an excuse that I don't know what I'm supposed to do for God. 
Because God gives instructions. God does not leave a vacuum. God does not just come and say, you have wronged me, and he leaves you to figure out how have you wronged God. No. He gives specific instructions. He gives guidance. Even when Paul, at that time Saul of Tarsus, when Saul uh, uh, was, was on his way to go and persecute the church, and he was struck down in the book of Acts. He was struck down. And Jesus asked him, why are you, why are you uh, 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 persecuting me? Why are you born on a Praise the Lord. Kwamba born on a Sauli. Yani in other words, umbono na nikose, umbono na nikwaz. Jesus asked, asked that. At that time, Paul, who was Saul at that time, did not understand who was talking to him. But he understood that he was under the power of him who is above our, or the maker of the law himself. The law that he was rushing to go and, de uh, and, and defend. Yet he was not going to defend the law, he was just going to kill people innocent lives, Christians, to fight the gospel. But God spoke to him. Jesus Christ spoke to, the, to him and asked him, why are you persecute, uh, persecuting me? And so, what, uh, did, did Jesus leave a, a vacuum so that, so that Paul could figure out and know who is, who is this that is talking to me? No, he did not leave a vacuum. When Paul asked, who are you? Jesus answered, he did not keep quiet. And so, this is what we are, that is how God has been. God does not say, hey, I've, I've set him, nimem seti, wacha ende, tuone chenye atafanya. Hapan. God gives you direction. And if you continue to go in that direction that God has told you not to go, you will have yourself to blame. You will not say that I did not know. Why? Because God in one way or another gives direction. He directs you. Praise the Lord. And so, here he's giving directives that you have been suffering. Though you are in those paneled houses, you have been suffering. And he gives them a reason. And then he gives them a remedy. He tells them what to do. He tells them that go up into, into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. In other words, that it's not time to be comfortable. It's not time to be in the comfort zone. It is time to take action. It is time to do work, praise the Lord. It is not time to sit. It is not time to fold your hands. It is time to work. And remember, not that these people are not working, because the Bible says they were planted, planting, but they were not getting much. They had constructed their own houses, but they could not have peace in those houses. They were, they, 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 they were harvesting, yet they couldn't see any benefit of their harvest. So working, they were working. But then they were only working for themselves. They were not working for God. They had neglected the work of God. They were concentrating on their own work at the expense of the work of God, at the expense of them, of him who had brought them from captivity, at the expense of the reason as to why they were restored back into Jerusalem, at the expense of, of him who sacrificed uh, and, and he said because of that relationship and because of the covenant that he had with the children of Israel, with Jacob, with Abraham, he wanted them to come back. But then they forgot about him. And so he gives them instruction. He tells them now, go back. Go, go into the mountains and build. That it's time. In other words, it's time to work. It's not time to sit. It's not time to find comfort in your houses. It's not time to just have sleep because you have got nice houses. No, it is time to work. <laughs> Something interesting. He did not tell them that it's time to repent. Repenting, yes, is okay. But after repenting, you have to work. That means that we have to see the fruit of repentance. Hallelujah. Of course, repentance is turning back. Repentance is changing course. Repentance is uh, living the way that you are going and turning 180 degrees 
so that you may follow the right uh, p- uh, path. Repentance is not 360 degrees. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because if you turn 360 degrees, you will continue going to the same direction you are going. But repentance is going the opposite direction, turning back. Hallelujah. And so, God here did not just say that now, uh, because you have done that, I want you to repent, and then it ends there. No, he says, go up. He says, go up the mountain. Go and walk. Go and do something to me. Use your physical hands. Now, this is not just spiritual work only. Also, use your hands. Use your resources. Use your time. Sacrifice. Carry your cross. Go climb the mountains. He did not tell them go into the valleys to get the trees, the timber. He did not tell them that go on the flat land and get the timber. He told them that go up the mountains. Praise the Lord. Going up the mountains is not easy. God is now redirecting the people so that the people may, uh, may come back to please him. The people may do that which uh, is, is top on the list. The top on the list was not to construct uh, for themselves well-paneled houses. The top on the list was to make, to reconstruct the temple. But then they, 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 they inverted the list. They turned it upside down. And so that go, that's why God is telling them that go to the, into the mountains and bring down timber. And as we are saying, going into the mountains to do that work, to bring timber, is not a mean task. It's not an easy task. In other words, he was telling them that now it's not time to give excuses. It's time to work. It's time to use your energy. It's time to use your strength. It is not only time. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't want to, to, to work in the house of the Lord. Eh, wakati ambapo kuna kazi inaendelea, kazi ya mikono, wengine wetu tunasema, mimi nitaka kwa nyuma nikiwafanya intercession. That I'll just be interceding for you as you work. Eh? There is work in the house. There is some roofing eh, in the church. Eh? There, is some, there is some construction in the church. Uh, don't worry. I, I, I will just intercede for you while at home. I will not come and take part. Praise the Lord. Uh, God told these people that if they wanted to be in good books with him, they were supposed to go into the mountains. And he did not spare anyone. He did not say, some of you go. He told them, go into the mountains. Climb the mountains. Encounter the risks that are there. For my sake. That is what the Lord wanted. For the sake of the Lord, climb those mountains. It's not easy to climb. Whether you are old or young, organize yourself on how you'll climb into the mountains and bring timber. timber. And this timber, you'll not just bring the, that timber and put it there, that it may lie down there. No, that timber is to be used to build my house. Praise the Lord. So, and I'm saying now uh, that uh, God is showing that it, is, was, it was not on, not just work, but it was serious work, climbing the mountains. Muna panda kwenye milima, muna enda kutafta miti, muna kata miti, muna rudi mumebeba. Tumienu zile njia mtatumia lakini murudi mumebeba. <laughs> Why? So that the, 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 the temple of the Lord may be reconstructed. Now, today, it is two-faced. Today, it involves uh, both the spiritual temple and the physical temple. That many a times we have neglected. And just before we go there, the last part of verse number eight, he says that after they have climbed uh, uh, the mountains and brought down timber and built uh, him, uh, his house, he, were, he says that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. I may take pleasure. I may find pleasure. That at that time, God was not finding any pleasure. God was not finding joy in the midst of his people. When he could see the people that he has restored from uh, Babylon, he couldn't have joy. 
Why? Because they had neglected his work into ruins. But then he's giving them a remedy and telling them that when you go and climb the mountains and bring timber and build my house so that the house is not neglected, it's not in ruins, I will take pleasure in it so that I may find pleasure in it, that I may find joy in it, I may find happiness in it, and that in that temple, in the work you will have done, uh, that I may be honored that the work that you do with your hands for, in the kingdom of God, God finds pleasure in it. Whatever you sacrifice to do in the vineyard of the Lord, God finds pleasure in it. He is pleased. Hallelujah. He is pleased. And he will love such a place. He will inhabit such a place. In such a place, he is honored. His name is honored and not dishonored. Oh, hallelujah. And so, this is why he was telling them to go and construct. Now, I wanted to, uh, to bring, uh, in our present context, we have got two levels. We have got the spiritual temple. The Bible says, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's the first temple. The spiritual man. The spirit man. And then now we have got the physical location of the temple or the altar of the Lord. So it's two way. And now God does not want us to neglect any of those two. But many times we find ourselves we are dwelling so much on pleasing the flesh on pleasing the physical man at the expense of the spirit man and also at the expense of the, also the physical location, the physical temple, the physical uh, 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 place of gathering of saints. The vineyard, the physical vineyard. So God is not pleased. God does not find pleasure when we have neglected his temple the, the spirit of the, uh, 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 the, his temple in us, the spiritual man. Because when you neglect, it means you are feeding the physical man or the, the, the flesh. And as you do that, the flesh loves to be comforted. The flesh loves to be comfortable. The flesh does not love to wake up at three to pray. The flesh does not love to, to, to pray and fast. The flesh does not love to do, uh, to sacrifice. The flesh does not love to give. The flesh loves to receive. The flesh loves to eat. The flesh loves to sleep. And the more you do that, the more you are feeding the flesh and making the flesh to be in the comfort zone. And the more slender and slender the spirit man becomes. The more devastated the more desolate your spirit man becomes, the more ruined the altar of the Lord in you becomes. Because we have concentrated, or you have concentrated, all the things that will make the flesh comfortable. This is what the, the people of Judah were doing. Concentrating on making themselves comfortable, yet neglecting the temple of the Lord. That was the physical temple of Jerusalem, neglecting the work of the Lord. And so as I have said, the first level is that the spirit man, the spiritual temple. We have to do everything, even using our physical strength to deny ourselves, to carry our cross, so that the spiritual man may grow bigger and maturer and stronger. Hallelujah. So that the temple of the Lord in us may be magnificent. May be somewhere that God will find pleasure living in. Just as also where we are serving. The physical location where we are serving. The physical work of God. Like construction of the work of the, the temple of the Lord. And not only the physical location, but also bringing many to Christ. 
As you bring men into Christ, you are continuing to beautify the temple, the body of Christ. And so there, God will find pleasure. There, God will be honored. There, God will love to, to inhabit there. Mungu atapata raha pale. Mungu atafurahia kukua pale. Why? Because we have not neglected our spiritual altar and the physical altar and of course the body of Christ. But when we neglect and say I will just deal with myself, God is not uh, pleased. He is not pleased at all at all. And so God has uh, uh, never has pleasure in ruined, desolate, and stalled spiritual temples and also stalled physical temples, stalled God's work, the work, uh, God's work that has, uh, that is, uh, that is told. And by Mesmamisha, that is stagnant. God, our God is a progressive God. And remember we read uh, in the last Bible session, uh, Bible study session, about how God told the children of Israel, he told Moses, that break camp. Because God is not interested in seeing us going round and round and round and staying in one place. God is not interested in us just uh, having a shanty apart from your spirit man. God is not interested in just seeing year in, year out that you, uh, people just worshiping a shanty throughout. Something has to happen. Praise the Lord. There should be some kind of development. There should be some kind of progress. We cannot just afford to leave the work of God. Watu wakiona wanaona ni kama wanaangalia kanisa ni vizuri kweli kanisa ama hekalu huanzia kiwango kimoja si sipuzi yale makanisa ambayo pengine yangali kiwango eh, ya ya wako sasa ndio wameanza kujenga ama ndio wameanza kuweka tu kitu siongelei hayo lakini naongelea unapata kwamba kuna mahali mnafanya kazi ya Mungu kuna mahali mnaabudia kuna mahali mnaombea watu wako sawa wanaishi kwa manyumba makubwa lakini wametengeneza kanisa ni ya makaratasi hiyo ni kanisa ya makaratasi na inakaa hivyo miaka kumi, miaka kumi na tano, inakaa vivyo hivyo god will not find pleasure there people will pray and cry and do everything there Mpaka unapata wakitaka kesha wanaenda waenda kufanyia kesha kwa nyumba ya mtu kwa sababu nyumba ya mtu imekuwa mzuri kuliko kanisa God is not happy with that he does not find pleasure in that God wants the his house one spiritual house you as an individual must be magnificent must be of splendor he's a god of splendor he's a god of magnificence he's a god of beauty his holiness is beautiful praise the lord and no wonder David said that I want to be all of your beauty, your beauty of holiness. There is no way the beauty of holiness can reside in a shanty for 15, 20, 25 years and people living in well furnished houses. Church of Christ, wake up! Hallelujah! Stop these excuses that so long as it is the altar of God, that so long as it doesn't matter whether it... Yes, it matters. Because sometimes we, we love this phrase that, oh, it doesn't matter where I'm worshiping the Lord from. It doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. It matters because God, our God, he says, he will lift from one glory to another. We ashamed the name of the Lord when we do not uh, 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 make an effort to stand and take the work of God from one level to another, from one glory to another. So it is as if we are telling God, God, here your word cannot apply. That the house of the Lord uh, uh, remains in shanties. The house of the Lord in a kama karatas throughout. And somebody get me very well. I'm not talking about that maybe that small place that has just started. I'm not talking about that place that maybe uh, looks temporary that has just started. I'm not talking about that. That with the Bible says, do not despise the humble beginnings. I'm talking about people have been gathering somewhere. People have been worshipping somewhere. 
their houses are good, they have been there for year in, year out, no progress. Hata watu wameogopa kuita kesha kwa sababu kesha yenyewe ukienda kwa hiyo ukienda hapo mosquito zinaleta shida throughout. Kwa sababu mahali pale ni pa makaratasi. Makaratasi inararuka wanaenda wananunua makaratasi ingine. Hiyo makaratasi ni ya kuanika mahindi sio ya kutengeneza nyumba ya baba. Kama imetengeneza nyumba ya baba itengeneza kwa muda mfupi watu wafanya bidii wa go up the mountain just like Haggai told the, God told Haggai uh, uh, to tell the people of Judah in uh, just as we have seen in verse number uh, uh, verse number 8 that go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored says the Lord God did not tell the people of Judah go into the mountains where there are many trees and cut leaves muleta matawi mala matawi ya 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 miti ama muende kwa garden mukata matawi ile ya 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 ndizi mkuja mtengenezea kanisa the word of the lord says go into the mountains in the mountains huko ndio kuna patikana the virgin trees the strong the cedars huko ndio zinapatikana in other words look for the best Hallelujah. And he says that's where I'll find pleasure. So let us stop these excuses. When we when we are doing the work of God, tunafanya kwa mpito. Tunafanya kwa sababu hapa kuna mtu ana lala. Ndio unaenda mahali pengine tunaenda tume tumekusanyika mahali kwingine watu kuna watu wamekusa I'm speaking to the body of Christ today. That you get some people have been gathering somewhere uh, worshiping uh, to worship the Lord but that place is in a mess at a cleanliness usafi peke yake is a total mess watu wakienda kwa mabao kwa wanapata bars iko classy lakini wakienda hapo mahali pa kuabudu wana ki, mvua ikinyesha kidogo mwaji inapita inapita kila mahali na mmekaa hapo miaka saba, tisa, kumi. Break that camp. Hallelujah. That is what the Lord is saying through this word. Go up the mountains. Yes, going there up the mountain is not easy. Mungu wetu sio maskini. Oh. Otherwise the uh, if we leave the place of our worship. I've talked about your spiritual being, the being the first temple. And I've said that when you concentrate so much on feeding the flesh on on making the flesh comfortable the spiritual man the spirit man will remain desolate ruined and that is the temple of the holy spirit god will not find pleasure there mungu hatapata raha pale and I've not I've also talked about the physical gathering place wherever you are you are you are ministering I'm challenging you wherever you are you are you are worshiping I'm challenging you. Do not leave that place to be stagnant for 1 2 3 4 5 years every other time. Unapata makaratasi ili zeeka ikazeeka baka upepo nini kipigita kidogo hivi inararua kila kitu. Alafu watu wanasema, "He, nimemuona bwana anapendeza." Hiyo kupendeza kwa Mungu itakuja hapo hivyo. Somebody I wish the Lord may reveal to you his splendor his majesty his glory Tuache hizi excuse ya ku ya ku ya kuangalilia Mungu baada ya kufanya vitu zote unaangalilia Mungu mahali kona huko mahali Even for those that have got rooms for prayer in your houses God has blessed you Your room ya maombi inafaa kuwa very nice not for yourself not just for yourself but also so that hata Mungu anapata raha pale so we are talking about the spiritual and also the physical place praise the lord that altar take care of it so that god may find pleasure many times we will we will say oh the 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 service was so powerful 
Ah, I just want to be in the presence of the Lord. That presence was so awesome. I loved, I love being in that presence. I love, ninafsikia ra katika wepo wa mungu. That's wonderful. Lakini, ask yourself, I'm challenging you today. Ask yourself, you are getting pleasure in the presence of the Lord. Does God get pleasure in your presence? Does he get pleasure in the pre- where, wherever you have gathered? Je, anapata ile ile raha? Ama unampa raw deal. We unataka kupata raha ya uwepo wake, lakini yeye utaki afurahie katika moyo wako. Utaki afurahie mahali pale. Who told you kwamba Mungu apende vitu vizuri? Kama angekuwa anapenda vitu vizuri visafi visafi, basi mbinguni haingekuwa ni imetengenezwa na barabara za dhahabu. Basi hata ekalu la Sulemani the magnificent temple haingekuwa na maana. And so tusiwe tusiwe tukidunisha mambo ya Mungu. Mungu sio Mungu wa mediocrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so he wants uh, he God wants us to forego our own leisures, our own pleasures and go up the mountain, deny ourselves and make him a good place his abode. His abode I mean not only spiritual but also physical. Hapo mahali ambapo unakusanyana una pakwe pazuri. Wewe moyoni mwako kukwe na lot of splendor, the presence of the Lord. Kukwe very conducive to the Lord. And as I've said, going up the mountains, it, it, uh, it calls for sacrifice. It calls for a lot of uh, straining. But the grace of the Lord is sufficient. Remember as Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 16, Verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my, disa- my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. So we have to take up that cross. Go up the mountains, bring timber, and build the Lord a house. Sacrifice. The spiritual temple, go up the mountain, pray and fast, and edify the spiritual altar, the spiritual temple. And then, concerning others, go out there, preach to others, bring them into the household of the Lord. God will find pleasure there. So it is after this work that God finds pleasure in his house, in his people, in his uh, uh, chosen ones. And he's honored. His name is honored. Because there is no way God will be honored in you. And also if you are day in, day out, year in, year out, you are always worshipping the Lord from a very dingy place without beautifying that place, without making that place progress from one level to another. God cannot be honored there. The world will see a mungu wawa kwa ni mungu ni maskin. Which is not supposed to be. So, the Bible says do not despise the humble beginnings. But the Bible does not say that remain in those, in, remain there in that level. Our God is a God of one glory to another. So we have to make sure we are moving. Verse number nine. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with their own house. So God continues to enumerate the consequences of uh, neglecting his work, neglecting his house, leaving his house in ruins, leaving his house to be in shanties. He enumerates. And he talks about that uh, uh, people expect much. People expect a lot, but they are not seeing it. They see just little. And he asks them why. He tells them because wameacha kazi yangu wameangalia kazi zao they have concentrated on their own things so 
Even if you planted much, expecting much, you'll not get much. You'll get little. Because God is not happy. God is not finding pleasure. He's not uh, having joy in what you are doing. Whatever you, uh, uh, such a person is doing, they are in a kwachukizo mbele za mungu. And he also says that uh, uh, what you brought home, or, uh, what you brought home, I blew away. That the little you are able to gather, once you bring it home and you say, this is mine, it blows away. It's blown away. Like chaff. Kama makapi. Things that uh, we get, yet neglecting the work of God. They do not hold any weight. They do not have any weight before the Lord. Mamba ambayo tunafanikiwa kupata. Na buwana tumeacha kazi ya mungu. Hayo mamba ambayo tunapata katika period kama hayo. Kama hiyo. God does not, such things do not have any weight. Hata tukisema tuleta sadaka kubwa. Na tumeacha kazi yake. Iyo ni kama kumuonga. It does not hold weight. God wants our total involvement. And that's why he told the children of Israel through Moses, love your God with all your might, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Yani na kila kitu. Imambo, kazi inaendelea mahali, I had mentioned it. Kazi inaendelea ya mungu. And then you hear someone say, I'll be, I'll be in my closet praying for you as you do that work. We need your involvement. Praise the Lord. We need your involvement. Watch your intercession. Intercession unaweza intercede tukifanya kazi. Look at what uh, the times of Nehemiah. One weapon in one hand and a brick or a, uh, a tool to work in another hand. Hii mambo ya kusema ati sisi ni wale ndio wale tunawaombeanga mkifanya. Wacha tubaki hapa kwa kona tulalange tu tukitafakari. Ujafanya kazi. Kama ni kupomoa, e, mahali kupanua, kutengeneza ukuta, enda katika mahali pako pa kanisa. Fanya hiyo kazi. Wana asifiwe. Kama ni kwenda kupalilia shamba la miwa, ndio pesa ipatikane ya kujenga kanisa la buwana, na mumepata contract mahali ya kwenda kupalilia, Wacha kusema sisi tutawa intercedia mupate nguvu njini muki, muki palilia yu miu. Get that way pia. Wana asifiwe. Alafu kuna wengine wanadanganya ati mimi nitawa, nita, nitawa support tu kwa pesa. Iyo pesa ngo aikuji. God is not pleased in such. So what God does, iyo time umechukua. An example muzuri ni hii. Umai kuwa in a position. Have you ever been in a position? There is a time maybe uh, you normally go to do the work of God or maybe you normally go to church on a Sunday. But another Sunday you choose, you say, uh, today maybe you, you have got, uh, maybe there is some work you do. You say, today, because Nikienda on Sunday, I'm normally paid double. So you decide this Sunday, I will go to work. I will not go to church so that I can be paid double. Check very well. After getting that double, where does it go? It is blown away. Ara you will find yourself ulikuwa tu umeenda sokoni kwenda kununua kitu. Maybe ulipata elfu moja, umeenda kununua kitu. Ukienda kununua kitu Ile change wanakurudisha ya miatano, miatano ni fake, miaine ndio, ndio original. Na huyo mtu wanakurudisha na anaenda. Iyo ni njia zingine ambayo osa ingine God can blow away your nini. Your hard earned money. Why? Because you neglected his work. Or that day you will go empty. God blows, blows the, what you could have found as success. He blows it away. Inaenda. That is our God. 
This God mwenye tunaimbanga our loving God. Pia is a God that wants our attention. He wants us to work for him. Not just to work for ourselves only, also to work for him. And not just to work, work diligently. Work with excellence. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. So whenever we reject or whenever we neglect God's work, all that we do, no matter how expensive, it remains to be chaff and is blown away. And that's where Solomon said, all is vanity. Inakwatu kama makapi, inapulizu. So stop pretending to be so, so committed to the work outside there to an extent that you neglect the work of the Lord. God will blow it away. So let us not find ourselves in such a state where God was blowing away everything that they could succeed to get in the book of Haggai. Verse number 10. And by the way, when God blows away, he scatters those things, they go and land where he's honored, where he's, play, where he's, he's pleased with. And so, if you thought you could benefit, you don't benefit, you get that someone else benefited. And there's nothing you can do about it. God is sovereign. He has mercy on him or her that he pleases. Verse number 10. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth its crops. Verse 11. I call for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. <laughs> now, God goes ahead that in addition to blowing away whatever they are succeeding to get, in addition to, uh, uh, in addition to taking away the little that they have gathered or making them not to harvest what they have expected, he, he also shut the heavens. Alifunga mbingu. Akafunga mbingu mbaka akukuata na umande. Diu, umande. Something ya kwamba ukitembe uko nyumbani unaonanga kama hii haina kazi. Unakuja, unamuka asubuhi unapata umande kwenye nyasi. Hata atushugulikangi kujua hii umande ilikuja aje. Very few people understand the science of dew. Because uh, we take it for granted. But here, God decides to shut the heavens to withdraw even dew. Why? Because his work has been left in ruins and people are enjoying and are concentrating on their own things. People are enjoying on extra time. People are enjoying on the, on the, on the customers that normally come on Sunday. So, wanasema, Sunday unajua ndiyo tunakuanga na wateja wengi sana. Kwa hivo, Sunday, wacha nisienda kanisani, nikae tu, nikae tu kazini. To an extent that people have got no time for God. God decides to shut the heavens. He, he withdraws the dew. And when he does that, crops cannot be produced. So that's where you find that your life, you are working so hard, but there is no productivity. God has withdrawn even the, the spiritual dew and, the, and the, the spiritual rain. Just as he also does physically. Whenever people neglect him, neglect his work, they leave his work in ruins. And so you find that people are not progressing. So people will plant fat seeds uh, uh, and break every curse of rejection, break every curse, new generational curses. It's okay for those to be broken, but give a careful thought. Wacha kukimbilia tu, ukisema, hii kusumbukana na sumbukana, ni generational curse. Give a careful thought to your ways. Just as we have read in verse number seven. Give a careful thought and see you will be able to know and tell God, God help me find out. 
So he says he shut the heavens. At that time, God sent drought to cripple everything and stagnate every productivity. Every living thing became unproductive. Just as we read in, in the last part of, of verse 11. Hmm? But, okay, verse 11. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces. On people, you see, on people. Walinyimwa, wakafungiwa, wakatumiwa kiangazi. So unapata people are operating under a spiritual drought and also a physical drought. There is no spiritual nor physical rain. People are dry. Why? Because they neglected the church of the Lord, the body of Christ. They neglected the spiritual temple. And this is not the first time God is doing that. He did it through prophet Elijah. In 1 Kings 17, verse 1, Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, uh, uh, sorry, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve there, uh, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Na hapa unajua Elia alisema kwa njia interesting the next few years. So yani amujui ni miaka ngapi hapo? Ni vile kuna mali kwingine tumeambiwa ni 3 and half but hapa alisema for the next few years. Ngangana ngangana na ukame for the next few years. And so when God has shut everything like that, has turned everything that was productive to be unproductive and to be barren. He wants people to realize so that they may come back to him. He wants people to retrace their steps. To stand at the crossroads and see their old path and go back to it. To make sure that the work of the Lord is active so that God may find pleasure in them. Otherwise, these people had, they could, as much as they labored, they could not and they were, they are, the work of their hands. The labor of their hands was not blessed. So they would, could work, but they are not finding productivity. That's what, what could be happening today also. That you could find yourself, you are really struggling. Kama ni kuamuka sa sangapi usiku naamuka. But then, you have neglected the work of God. You have got no time for the work of God both your spiritual person and the work of God in the church. And sometimes you only go to church once in three months. And when asked what's, what's happening, as you know nowadays I'm so busy, eh? We are so busy. Remember we have read there that it is because people are so busy with their, with their own things. We read there. That is, uh, we read in verse number, I think, nine. Yes, that you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home blew away. Why? Declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains, uh, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy, busy with your own house. So don't be too busy for the Lord. Hallelujah. These people wanted to take pleasure in uh, uh, in their own things, yet neglecting and dishonoring de and denying uh, God and denying him his glory, his majesty, his splendor. And so God couldn't allow. So they were giving some other things God's glory. And God cannot share his glory. His God, his, his God Elkanah, Jehovah God Elkanah, the jealous God. He does not share his glory with things or people or with any other. So that's why he had even to shut the heavens. He had even to withdraw dew. He had to bring supernatural wind to blow away everything that the people were gathering. The loving God, we, also, we always uh, pray, and his love does not change. It is because of his love that he does that, so that people may come back to him. 
Otherwise, people will labor, and it will be in vain. So the, big, the biggest lesson here is that put first things first. And what is the first thing? Is to ensure that we work in the vineyard of the Lord so that God may find pleasure in us, in his house, and that he may be glorified and be honored. If he's not glorified and honored, if he does not find pleasure in us, all that we'll be doing will be in vain. But if he finds pleasure, he will also make us find pleasure in his presence and in what we are doing. We will find satisfaction. Mifuko yetu haita toboka. Yes. Yes. So that God may be happy. And when he's happy with us, when he's pleased with us, he, really, he opens the heavens. He releases the spiritual blessings. And that's when he says in Malachi that try me. How? Test him. How? Through our concentrating also on putting his work first. First things first. If not so, our labor will be in vain. Just as David, uh, the psalmist, Put it in verse number 1 and 2 of Psalms chapter number 127. Psalms 127, verse 1 and 2. Uh, the Bible says, the psalmist says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Praise the Lord. Yes. So it shall be all vanity if we do not make sure that God finds pleasure in his house, in his house, in our hearts, in our lives, in his house where we worship, like here, in his house, in bringing many souls to the Lord. Because the more we bring many souls to the Lord, the more we are, we are, uh, we are being many, many members uh, because we are different parts of the body of Christ the more we edify and build the body of Christ. So give a careful thought of your ways and retrace your steps. And do not, do not leave the house of the Lord or the work of the Lord in desolation, in ruins, or unattended to. Let God find pleasure in you. You will fly, find pleasure and pleasure forevermore. You are not there and you are not, no, you are not born again. I would like to pray with you. I would like you to repeat this prayer uh, after me so that God may find pleasure in you. That's the first step of building for the Lord his house because you are the temple of the Lord and he wants to be pleased in you. So you are not born again. You are watching and you are not born again. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of my sins. I'm surely a sinner. Forgive me and sanctify me. I repent for dishonoring, for defiling, and not glorifying your name. Father, wash me. Remove my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. From today, I'm yours, Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may hear your instructions and follow them. In Jesus' name I'm born again. Amen. Let me pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this brother, this sister that has accepted you, Lord. I pray that you will touch them, you will fill them, you will empower them in the mighty name of Jesus. Refill them, my Father, Lord. Them that had been back, back, had backslidden, I pray for your grace to lift them once again from that miry clay in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the grace of deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we honor you. We thank you even because of the word, my Father. We pray that, my Father, open our understanding, open our eyes, open our conscience, so that even as we give a, thought, a careful thought of our ways, as we consider our ways, as we stand at the crossroads, open our eyes to see, so that we, you may tell us this is the way 
you follow it in the name of Jesus. We want to follow you, my God. Father, we repent because Jehovah God, we have neglected your work in many dimensions. We pray that you may forgive us. We have uh, uh, brought shame to your work by entertaining or doing mediocrity in your work, my Father. Yet you are the God of excellence. You are the God of purity and holiness. In your holiness, there is beauty. In heaven, the roads, the, 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 the ways are built, are constructed with gold. Father, and adorned with every precious stones. Father, yet we have given you the second priority. We repent, my God. We accept today that, Lord, we will be giving you first priority, that you may find pleasure in us. Many times we have said we have enjoyed being in your presence, but we have not minded whether you enjoyed being in us, whether you enjoyed being with us, our being in our presence, my God. Father, we pray that you may help us, that we may also always praise, glorify, and honor you, Lord, and make you uh, find pleasure, my Father, in what we are doing, that we may inhabit in the praises of your people, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for, for everyone that is watching or listening. Anoint them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Break any yoke that was making them to still continue sitting under captivity, yet you have set them free, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, enable us to arise and do your work. Arise and shine, even in this year, in your work, in working for you, in dedicating our time for you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Increase us, my God. Increase this altar. Thy fire, my Father, may continue being kindled and rekindled and rejuvenate your people. Revive your people in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you. Thank you for the friends on Facebook, Lord. Continue anointing them more and more and keeping them safe and as you continue to teach us. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much also for coming to attend physically. May the Lord God bless you so much in this new year 2022. Uh, here in Covenant, we welcome you on Sunday as the servant of God ministers in the first and second service. Uh, Bishop Dr. Fidelis Oboge will be ministering. On Tuesdays, we have got prayers here right from 6 uh, going to uh, 7. And uh, on Wednesdays, we have got a powerful Wednesday worship service. Please do join us. We do love you so much. May the Lord God bless you and shalom. Amen.